Hello and welcome to episode 169 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is the secret show, but don't tell anybody. Don't say a word, please. It's secret. Yeah. So, hello. Glad to uh, see you again, Mark. I feel like I just saw you uh, the other day when we did a show. Our, really? Um, not, not a couple hours ago? Well, yeah, and a couple of hours ago, it was just you and I chatting privately, which we will discuss. Uh, but uh, yeah, we just did our um, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, um, I guess people call it mean tweets, uh, comments from yep. our past secret shows, and that was a couple of days ago. Otherwise and, known as the Ego Crushing Show. Right, I mean, you know, yeah, not good, not good at all. But there's the ego building of somebody thinking kindly enough of you to send you a present in the mail. Right on. Yeah. All right. Let me show three shirts, which I've not opened yet. Oh, whoops. Now that just fell on the floor. And that just fell on the floor. Um, three shirts. <laughs> three shirts, yes. Uh, from Johnny and Tammy Armstrong. They, uh, let me see if there's anything here. Um, it's more about the custom colors that they used. And I'm going to show their logo in a minute. Three shirts. And I will try to show them, but I'll tell you about them and then tell you where you can get one if you're interested. And I I'm not getting profits from this or anything in case anybody wonders. It says, I'm not crazy. I just happen to have a lot of cats and think the earth is flat. So That's awesome. That's a great one. Yeah. For those of you who have cats and think the earth is flat, how cool is it? Very cool. Got Neat. a black one. It's and good. let me see what else is in here. Oh, it's the same shirt, but in a purple colorway. Isn't that awesome? Nice. You can really see it as well in the uh, camera with the purple, but in per person you can. And uh, let's see. Their MO is Missouri, right? Uh, yeah. Abbreviation? Yep. It's one of those abbreviations that makes no sense when it comes to American states. And then this one where you can really see the writing right here. So, yeah, these are cool. And what I dropped on the floor a second ago, I'm going to grab our business cards where I'm going to be able to tell you where they are. Here we go. Johnny Armstrong, flatbydesign.com, custom t-shirts. Once again, that's Johnny Armstrong and uh, flat and then um, hyphen bydesign.com. Earth is flat, flat water, flat earth. That's their logo. So you can take a picture of that right there if you want to get one of those t-shirts for your very own. I thank them very much for sending me the shirts. Um, it's, it's, oh, stop, stop. Um, Flynn is trying to destroy. Uh, both Johnny and Tammy sent them to me and I, I think they're tremendous. That's really cool. I, yeah, it's yeah. cool. And I am wearing, I probably, I don't know if I showed this to you on a show, but I am wearing a Flat Earth Army shirt. See? Very cool. Yeah. Now people will say, oh, they're just showing their fashions. Not really. We're showing things that have to do with Flat Earth that people have been kind enough to send us. I'm not and selling Flat Earth Army shirts, but I do dig them. Yeah. So. That's really, really I think cool. we all need to get shirts that say uh, we are all Tim Osman, the troll, <laughs> which segues into the top story in Flat Earth, the outing of the Tim, outing. Uh, 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 no, Tim Osman. I'm sorry, the my outing. cats are really We're, being crazy. Let me you talk and I'll move. I'll talk. You can go try to stop things from being broken, which happen all, all the time. Cats. Now. I got that little cat herder. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there were three Flat Earth meetups last night. There was one in Fort Collins, Colorado, one in Denver, Colorado, and one, I believe, in Chicago, Illinois with Jake Gibson. And the notorious troll, we're going to call him Tim Osman, attended the Denver one and shot. It was doing a live stream from the corner of the volleyball court. And, uh, you know, didn't take them that long to be discovered. And then they outed him. You know, they went over with his cameras and their cameras and stuff and, and shot him. So the question is, and then some of it's been posted, but others have not, you know, they haven't posted the video, the actual interview when they were talking to him from that camera, camera vantage point. So the question then becomes, nobody's that dumb to try to do it live streaming. And, you know, um, seriously, he could have stayed in that volleyball court and just recorded it without streaming it, and no one would ever know he was there. So, question is... Was he what? trying? Was he trying to, to get caught? I mean, he says in the beginning of the video that he actually is trying, and seriously, did not take that long, because you got to remember the chain of events that had to happen. You had to have the, the Penguin police 
figure it out, let IPS know. IPS has to contact the restaurant and get a hold of the organizer. The organizer then has to go over. And by that time, it, it took like a full, what, almost an hour before they actually went over to talk to him. So. I think that he, well, he does say in a video that he did that he wanted to be discovered. Um, yeah. If he wanted to be discovered, he said, in order that we didn't dox the wrong guy, um, uh -huh. so Jason Hornsby, <laughs> who many have said really is him, uh, yeah. after finding his profile on Facebook. Um, but if he wanted to prevent that guy from being unfairly doxxed, and by doxxed I mean having his information revealed, why right. didn't he come out on his own and just put his face on camera and say, hey, I'm the guy known as Tim Osman, see my face, I'm not that Jason Hornsby guy, bye yeah. guys, and then go on. Uh, that part seems to be a stretch. Uh, revisionist uh, oh, yeah. history. Uh, absolutely. And it, it, why would he care? To be honest, you'd think, it, why, why would he care if the, if the wrong guy was being doxxed? You can't tell me this guy's got a conscience. We're talking about the same individual that, that sniped all sorts of different people and have killed, has killed off several YouTube accounts. Exactly. And put, possibly ruined another man's professional career, who we won't get into right now. Mm. So... Mm. Yeah, yeah, this guy's going to grow a conscience? No. I don't know if it's a conscience, maybe, uh, I don't know what it is. There's part of all of us, this is a crazy thing to say, and some will say, ah, you're wrong. There's part of all of us that kind of like him, In like you like that kid that you go to school with who's kind of bratty, but you've been going for several years, you know him, you know to avoid him. Um, he's like that. He's he's a kid who always is getting in trouble and getting detention, but you I... have a fondness no, no, no. One of my best friends was like that, the, the Loki character from Norse mythology. And I know I, I appreciate mischievousness. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I do appreciate that. But being mean and doing some awful, awful things. Oh, yes. I am not a fan of practical jokes. Right. And Well, they aren't practical jokes. The things that he's done to other Flat Earth content providers have been despicable, actually. Yeah. But yeah. he's also buddied up with other people who were flat earthers and pulled them away from flat earth, which is fine. People can change their mind, but um, done it in a way where he's really awesome to them and really sweet and really loving and really kind. So he's able to have two faces. And even the current logo that he uses for his YouTube channel has two faces. Well, if you're going to go down that road, do you know who that reminds me of? Um, I, got, I, I got to know one person who has two faces, but I don't think we're talking about the same person. No, probably not. I've got two words for whoever Tim Osman is, and I'm pretty safe that we know who he is at this point. Uh, those two words are Lee Bracker. Oh, Lee Bracker true. started the same way. He recorded conversations without people knowing. He released them. He did everything he could. Now, he wasn't that good technology-wise. You know, he, he couldn't you know, snipe to save his life. But he wreaked a lot of havoc. And what happened to Lee Bracker in the end? He died. He killed himself. So How sad is that really, though? A man who'd I mean, be so distraught about whatever it was going on in his life that he'd kill himself. Um, I don't know if it was over Flat Earth or uh, he had probably had emotional problems, obviously. He, um, I don't know. That guy... I believe, um, in, I believe in karma. What goes around comes around. And Lee Bracker, I, people say, oh, no, you're cruel and you're callous. No, no, no. Lee got what was coming to him because he did some awful things and it was like oh no you can't wish death upon anybody yeah i can yeah you bet well, i can i won't go as far to say as to say that he uh, he asked to speak with me and i openly spoke with him and he made a video about it um he didn't tell me he was recording me but there was nothing that i said that i don't stand behind today there was nothing i said about other people nothing you know in flat earth community nothing negative um i think that interview is still hanging out there somewhere because he wasn't able to close down his youtube channel because he's no with us. You, you know what? I, I'll I'll even I'll even amend what I just said. Mm -hmm. At least Lee put his face on camera this and his name. True. He yeah. was not shy about saying who I'm. Lee Bracker. I'm going to expose blah blah blah. He thought Troll. you were uh, that your logo in the opening to Strange World was uh, Masonic. In reality, um, Jonathan from Jersey designed it for you without your input and just said, "Here, what do you think about this opening?" And you said, "That looks cool." And put There's it on. a cool logo. I still got it lying around. I don't really use right. it, but but no, anyway. Lee. Look, Lee at least put his name out there. Mm -hmm. Trolls are cowards. Trolls are just faceless noises from the crowds. You know, from the crowd, they throw rocks from the darkness. That's all nice. they do. Mm -hmm. if you don't want to be a troll. You know, you 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 know, put yourself out there. If not, you're nothing. You're just a coward. Man no. up.
a lot of people like them that are not flat earthers anymore and they're total non-flat earthers at all that never were and never would even consider it who like him too so i understand people like who they like that's totally fine um, I have somewhat of a truce with him myself. He used to attack me a lot. He put my phone number and my address in the uh, chat box of some of my on-air shows. He's used my logo. He's used my name without my permission. I'm not mad at him because I just think that he's obsessed. And you have to really just forgive and say, and this is how I look at it, and just say, okay. You know, you're you're on the wrong road. Believe what you want about the shape of the earth, but you're on the wrong road the way you treat other human beings. And go ahead, do what you wish. It's not going to hurt me. Um, my my closing remark on that is if you Burn see if night. you see him in a crosswalk, hit the gas, hope for the best. <laughs> the world will be that. a better place when he's gone from it. Well, maybe he could shape up or ship out. I don't know if you're able to hear this, but my cats are crazy running around, kissing, play fighting. Why now? They were quiet right before this. I don't know. They feel the drama in the air. Yes, they do. Oh, and uh, for those who watched our very last show uh, previous to this, which is the good, the bad, and the ugly, flat earth comments, the mean tweet show, at the very end of the show, I was kind of tipsy because we were drinking, uh, there was this crash sound. And I didn't know what it was. I finished the show, and it was the. Uh, glass water pitcher for my water distiller. Um, they just nudged it off the edge and smash. And uh, I ordered a new one, a lot of money, like $55 to replace it. These for cats me? better do a lot of housework to make up for it. <laughs> I was about to say, your cats are getting quite adept at knocking off big things. Today, they knocked down a huge vase with calla lilies on the floor and smashed that. So okay. there's no more vase-like objects, glass objects. I I had a friend who had two cats and the yeah, yeah I, I watched it happen too often. That is one cat is fine. One cat will knock off small things. Yes. But what happens is it's different with two cats. Two cats are more, they chase each other. And when they're trying to avoid the other cat, yeah. they will plow through anything that's in their yes. path. So including if it, you. <laughs> yeah. So if it is as if it weighs about as much as they do, they're more than happy to give it a glancing blow. Yeah. And there it goes. And uh, Rory, I know, is the cat who knocked down the water pitcher. He wanted water. There was water in his bowl, but he wanted that water. I don't know why. So I'd seen him go near that pitcher and kind of push it with his face a few times, but I just put it back in its place and thought nothing of it. He had water. I should have seen the signs. But anyway, I've got a new setup for all of that stuff so it doesn't happen again. But it was a very interesting punctuation to the show, a giant crash at the end. So. Gotcha. Um, oh, you know, I, I do need to read something without mentioning this person's name because I didn't uh, get permission to read um, a read her name. There is a Facebook friend of mine who was at the Denver meetup where the troll Tim Osmond was. And uh, this person wrote me and said, I was at the Denver meetup. I saw the troll firsthand. And I wrote, wow, he's been plaguing us for years. Now he says he was meant to find out he, that he meant to be found out. This person writes, just baffles me more than anything. Why waste your time on something you're not into? His presence seems so pointless. I predict this is all just his co cognitive dissonance and he may change his views soon. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. This person says he needs to just give in. Oh, what? Even if he turned flat earth? No, I'm sorry. You can't trust the man as far as you can throw him. Even if he even if he came out tomorrow and, and did a, a tearful video and said, oh, no, I'm in flat earth. No. No, no, no. Oh, if no you, that would just be maybe, a maybe if you stayed flat earth for another six months after that and didn't do anything wrong, yeah, sure, maybe. Maybe you'd gain some trust, but until then, no. Trust is important, kind of, but also we are only here and should trust ourselves, kind of, in a way. It's kind of a 50-50 thing. You hmm. can't put all your trust in anybody due to the fact that somebody, people let people down all the time. Um, trust yourself and use your best discernment with others. But the person went on to write, there were about 20 to 25 people at this particular Denver meetup with only two females. So nice. uh, more women need to get involved in Flat Earth, that's for sure. Yes. Oh. I don't know how many women were at the Fort Collins meetup, mm -hmm. but there were at least 40 people there, which was great. That is the maybe largest meetup yet? Largest meetup outside of, yeah, probably it is the largest meetup. Well, we don't know what the numbers have been at FE. A holes uh, uh, live. Um, I've seen. It looks twenty as high as like twenty ish. Yeah, yeah exactly. But I mean, go, th those are impromptu meetups. We don't know what happened in Chicago last night either. Chicago's a good city. I love that city. Love yeah. it. Uh, in fact, there's another one in Florida. I'm going to be doing a trailer for. They just sent me a thing. 
That's so if you've got a meetup, Mark will make a trailer for you and put it on his channel. So all you need to do is message him. At yeah, don't, and don't go nuts. If you have video capability, if you have the ability to make your trailer, it would be easier for me to put it on my channel. I don't mind doing templates, but there's only oh, yeah. so many, there's only so many I can do. Because if Here this thing I am gets just here. offering your services. Mark will also shine your windows and wash your car. No, 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 no. I can do just templates. Just message him. <laughs> I, mean, I can crank, it, crank them out pretty quickly, but yes. don't go crazy. Right. You know, if you if you have the ability, make the video and I will mirror it on my channel. Right, right. That's right. that's the easiest way. So anyway, it's msargent23 at comcast.net. And if you do get him to wash your car, make sure you specify to use clean rags only. He uses those ones that have tiny bits of gravel in them and it makes scratches and it's just not good. Really? Really good. <laughs> I lose one bet in the office pool and I seriously. Exactly. Um, let's see what else is going on. Okay, there is a Flat Earth conference coming up. And this one is in the UK. Conference organizer, his name is Gary John, and he lives in the UK. And right. he is my guest on Friday. Um, and also Karen Pettit, who also is a big part of this and putting it together. And there's going to be some really great speakers at this event. And um, it's. I am probably one of them. I wouldn't yeah. call myself great, but I, I am going to be attending this thing if it happens. From what I, I understand. So, who else do you know that's going? I know a lot of names have been um, dealt from beyond the imaginary Del, curve, perhaps. Dave, Dave Murphy, uh, Darren, Darren Nesbitt. Darren Nesbitt. Uh, I believe uh, Martin Leakey is involved in this as well. Yeah, you know, I had the list in front of me, but I don't want to quote it too much. The point is, is that it hasn't the, the structure it's, hasn't been completely right. It's not until next yet. April, but they're putting it together now. Yeah. And um, the point is, it's in, real. Yeah, there it's going on next April in the UK with a hotel, several days, some uh, light food provided and beverages. And um, you know, they're now working with Robbie D of Celebrate Truth, who is one of the the leaders of the uh, American Flat Earth Conference coming up in Raleigh, North Carolina. So they're now talking and it's a, it's hard work to put together something like that. Now I've never put anything like that together. I've put up small, put together small things, but uh, they are going to be telling us all about who's actually coming, what they actually have planned. And that's on my Friday, 20, June 22nd show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Got so uh just wanted to let you know about that in case you're thinking, well, the Americans have this conference. What about UK? Well, yes, you've got one coming too. And did, did you get the thumb for that? Did you? Oh, did no. You, did you send me a, a thumbnail to use? Yes. Did you, Ooh, did you? Is it cool? Yeah. Did you see it in, did you still no. Skype open? No, I closed it all. Ah, I'll look, I'll look later. I'll look later. Well, everybody will you'll, see you'll totally, it. You'll totally get it. Yeah. So, oh, and my guest tomorrow, which is the 22nd of June, 2017, is YouTuber Anthony Riley. The shows had to be rescheduled because YouTube was down. Was it last week? There was some kind of a yeah, there outage was some weird for YouTube yeah. in the UK on a day and then in the US on a day. So things got pushed back. So I guess we've done on our housekeeping, haven't we? We've got the troll situation. We've got uh, the meetups covered that meet just ups. happens. And uh, oh, I've got a meetup coming, two of them. They're in the description box. One, if you want to go, it's in Houston, Texas, and it is on Sunday, July 2nd at 7 p.m., and it's a four-course vegan meal at an Italian restaurant. Same thing I did last year. And if you'd like to go, just uh, as soon as you can anyway, uh, first come, first serve. I have a cap on it since I'm, I'm paying for the food, and I'm not a multimillionaire. Um, at uh, misteer, M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E -S -S -E -E at gmail.com, just say you're coming. And I do have some people who have already said they're coming, and I have their names here, but I won't. Oh my, I can't grab it because of where they are located right now. But anyway, there's also, there's also two hangouts. have already said they're coming. So there's, there's two hangouts this weekend as well. What? What yeah. else? They're, well, the Boston Frog Pond. Do Boston. I know about this? Sure, you do. Okay, I do. Tell we'll me more. You do. The, there was a briefing. The, uh, the Boston Frog Pond, Boston Common Frog Pond is going to be this Saturday. Mm hmm. And at noon, I, I want to get the time right on that. And also there's one going to be in Phoenix. Okay. Also on Saturday. And you guys can just type it in. It's on, they're on my channel, the trailers for it. And you just type in um, Flat Earth Meetup or Flat Earth Phoenix or Flat Earth Boston. And then the one I just got is going to be, in fact, I have not even made the trailer for this one yet. Is, hang on one second. 
There's a quest for truth, YouTuber. Promo, Jacksonville, Florida, Saturday, July 1st at 9 p.m. Drinks, darts, live music at a bar called Mercury Moon. Ironic, I know. Please promote. Thanks. <laughs> Funny. So, yeah, so that one, yeah, that which is why I titled the show from last night, Groups Are Forming from the Strange World Show. There's you know, just tons of stuff. Well, they're hang raising, on. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, and then let's let's not forget the other ones that are they're going to be happening. Take on the world seventeen dot com, where Rob Skiba will be doing the flat Earth section. And for information on that, contact Chris Bailey at four four zero six six eight six three seven three. The summer twenty seventeen conference by the Danoon Institute of Biblical Research, where we got Zen Garcia versus Dr. Stephen Pigeon at the Holiday Inn Gwinnett Center in Atlanta. That's August fifth and sixth. Yes. You mentioned the one in Phoenix, the yes. Glenn Bordeaux. Okay, good. I'm getting yep. Yep. overwhelmed. Yep. That's the 24th. There's so. a okay. lot of, again, groups are foreign. And the Flat Earth Rally on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls on Canada Day from noon to four. You can contact N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, F as in Frank, E as in Edward at gmail.com. That's N-F-F-E or Flat Earth Hamilton at gmail.com. So there's an Atlanta thing. That I don't know where Take on the World 17 is the the just message us if you've got something yeah, there's a lot up. of stuff happening so if you guys want to do your own again i will promote it just give me some lead lead time to do it and, and this show is sort of like the flat earth billboard at your local cafe we are at the moment yeah for sure exactly um speaking so. of billboards um there's a uh research flat earth think you know where you live and then a picture of the flat earth like taken from a balloon it says research flat earth below that and they're raising money for this um Effie BB at Detroit Metro Airport. So you can go and donate to that through GoFundMe. Effie BB at Detroit Metro Airport. So that's something that to need some fundraising capabilities if you've got an extra $5 or whatever the case may be to donate to that. And you and I, I mean, I had the idea last time that maybe you and I should do a GoFundMe for a billboard, but we don't know what to put on it. And of course we could put Research Flat Earth. Okay, that sounds great. But I was trying to think of brainstorm and come up with something else. You know what? I don't know. Research flat Earth is a great three. You remember because people is great. It's short, and people have that. They're driving fast, and it also short attention span. What they will retain, but you also could end up with a Vsauce video when you research flat Earth, or a debunker video Not of as, any other sort. I mean, you could, but chances are that you're gonna you're gonna run into a member of the community. Chances are. You could also say Google Flat Earth, like that guy did on the hillside in Los Angeles. True, but then it's, ago. I think Google, then we're mentioning a brand. When can also, you, yeah, can you use Google's name yeah, on a billboard? Yeah, we don't want to. And also Google, I don't know, they do all sorts of things, those Google doodles that have these hidden messages in them, I right, think. I don't right. know. Don't I mean, know. it's it's about as simple as you can get. We can we can come up with something, I suppose. Yeah. But as far as endorsing, you know, me, I wouldn't even endorse mine. I mean, yeah, you could type in Flat Earth Clues. But would that tell people in those three words? I mean, unless you make it longer than three words, it's not going to tell you. Right. Remember, the, one of the reasons why the clues, again, it was just a side note, why the clues did as well as they did is because at the very end, they say, you know what? Do your own research and ask questions. And it was what in their print. And you've I been lied it. to, Research Flat Earth. Good. But can you get the letters big enough? That's the yeah. reason why it's three words right now is it's so big. Honestly, if you could get away with one letter, I mean, seriously, if you could this do the whole billboard two letters F E, right, that would be great. Except it doesn't tell people to search F E. Right, right. Or we could just put out my phone number. Right. And see what happens. Or a picture of a cat. I don't know. Or a picture of a cat. <laughs> no. Yeah. So or those are the of, things that are happening when it comes to, uh, as far as we know. I know we've missed some things that are that are happening, but uh, there's um, people that. There's a guy named Charles and his wife, Annie, and they celebrated their 41st wedding anniversary the other day. And uh, just want to say congratulations to both of you. Annie is a redhead. Charles is my Facebook friend. And they're really, really nice people. And they always watch our shows and very supportive flat earthers. So happy anniversary, a couple days late, but 41 years together. That's Hey, beats, I mean, that's beats the, beats the odds. You know me. I'm not a uh, everyone. What I mean, they say 50% of people get divorced. Is that actually I mean, it's, people who don't get married? So it, it's 60. 
Really? There's a, there's a 40% success rate as of now. And I know you're an, I'm a never going to get married guy yourself. Well, um. it really depends. I mean, I've been, I have toyed with the idea over the years, but they've been for different reasons. You know, one was for she was rich. <laughs> the other time that she had a gun to your head. I mean, exactly. I well, it was the father and it was a shotgun. Yeah, no, well. it was, um, no one, one time I had considered it for citizenship for a, oh. uh, um, a woman that I had met over in Egypt. But okay, it's not, so were you in love? Would you have considered a real relationship? No, well, no, not in love. And and again, that goes against my. You you probably read the Life's Little Instruction book, which is a fascinating little book of all the cool the things you should do, like use the good silver or buy anything that kids are selling on card tables in their front lawn. Uh, you know, stuff like uh, that. Yeah, I always buy from a lemonade stand. That should there, be in that book. That, yeah. well, it, is, it is in that book. But the one, the one of the things on it and says only marry for love. Oh, that's, of course. That's it. And, but Only you say, and, and you say, I mean, and you say, of course. But how many people? I mean, I have. I mean, so many people I have known, and they're not shy about it. It's like, oh no, I married for this reason. I married for this reason. I know, I know, and it's been suggested to me that I've had a opportunity. I guess you'd call it proposal, and um, it would have been like a secure situation, you know. And they really cared about me and maybe loved me, but I didn't love them, and I knew that the. the I, I didn't have to think about it but at all, zero, because I'd rather be alone than be with somebody I didn't love. For me, it's always been reinforcement. And that is, I have known, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, 10 happily married couples, less than 10 in my entire life, happily married. Meaning, you know, you got to you know, where you went a, quite a distance and you're still... Well... We have these particular flat earthers I just messaged. Well, there you go. We've got Although I Bob and Cammy, and Technic. we've got Jaren and Missa, and there's other people right now who are saying, and so and so and so and so. I mean, there are. Uh, now. Yeah, I know. Check your watch, <laughs> but I, all of them are still together at this point. Uh, 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 area. Anyway, what else? What, what else are we talking? Well, about? Well, we've got you wearing red glasses, and it's the elephant in the room, and we have to. We have to take a poll this in the live chat. Movie, this is a movie reference, so and it's I an obscure know. movie reference. If you can tell Red me what glasses. movie it is, you get a gold star, and I will send you uh, a copy of the life's the, little instruction. The, the, book. No, the free copy of my survival guide. Do really? You okay. Yep. You'll send somebody something that's already free. What a yeah, it's already reward. free. But uh, it's look, it's something. It's a token gift. But find out what you know, where, why I'm wearing, what nod am I doing with these red glasses? And if you don't like them. Do you like the black ones better, which IPS calls my Clark Kent glasses, otherwise known as the birth control glasses, because you're never going to get laid wearing these glasses. Which are these? That's not true. I think glasses on a man is super attractive. Trisha, you are super weird. Well, we know that. But if it's these... Way. I like the, You like these better? Okay, I'm not going to say my statement. Let's go into the chat. For those who prefer the red glasses, put a two and put a one for the black glasses. The one black glasses were the original. So one if you like the black, two if you prefer the red. Right. So there we go. And gold star, if you can figure out the movie reference, why I would ever own a pair of red, red glasses. So red glasses, that's put a two. Red, if you red like band glasses. Black. Um, and uh, as we're waiting for the poll and results to come in, Zulu One says he's at 20 years of marriage this year. And Liga Rudziza, I know I'm saying that wrong, says um, they, she and, no, he, well, you know, I don't even know. I'll say oh. she has been together for nine years and finally decided they're going to make it official. So. Oh, that's good. The, um, and by the way, my, one of my qualifiers for that marriage thing is it's got to be a first marriage. Oh, so you won't marry somebody unless if they were married before. No, 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 no. I'm just saying as far as happily married people, oh, I, I, oh. you know, if, you, if it's like, oh, yeah, we're happily married. Well, and, and they say, oh, yeah, it's my third wife. And it's like, dude. Yeah. Uh, happily married, my third wife. And we just got married five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at that babe over there. <laughs> so like, like Billy Bob Thornton, he could say that he's happily married right now. It's mm -hmm. his sixth wife. Right. Wow. I, does that count? Really? Can you actually say, oh, yeah, you know I, I know what love is. It's my sixth wife. <laughs> I know what love is one person at a time. All right, let's go to the votes. Let's he go to may, the polls. He may not be Mr. Right, but he's, he's definitely Mr. Right, Mr. right now. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. All right, going into the polls. Remember, number one voting is for the black original glasses. Number two is for the red. Dave Hinkle says number two for the red. 
Ginger Sugarbush says number one and says the red glasses are, or the, says number one, but says the red glasses are from Ghostbusters. Nope. Ooh. Um, Thank AJ, you for playing. AJ says number one, which is the black original glasses. Martin Leakey likes the red ones, says number two. Dia Vadante, number one, which is the originals. Darian Wagner agrees with the originals. Uh, Christopher Brady says the blue is better, which are the originals that are blue, black, the Clark Kent looking ones. Huh. Um, Eponym 2 <laughs> says. Voting for number one, the black ones, or blackish blue. Jerry Cthulhu says number two, voting for the red. Frank Bucciccio says number one, the black blue ones. Uh, Shane Corning says number three, which I guess means uh, no glasses whatsoever. Bill oh, Keith okay. says one, the black blue. Flat Earth Accord says two, the red one. Zulu one votes for one, the black. Ridgeview says one, Andres one. Ghost Protocol likes the red ones, votes number two. Ranger Tex likes two. Uh, Dave Hinkle says 33. <laughs> uh. Spaghetti Western votes well, for they don't, they don't. A lot of people don't hate the red ones. Uh, like the no, they don't. Hard Candy Mittens. Hey, she's awesome. Uh, says number one. Likes those black blue ones. Mark Twain says one. Uh, Chris Topher says, are the red glasses from They Live? No, but two excellent. I love the fact that both people have mentioned 80s movies. Yes, because yes. Because this is, it is an 80s movies reference. Okay. Jerry oh, Cthulhu yeah. says L.A. Story. Also a good, in fact, was that, yeah, I think that was late 80s or mid 80s. Let's just name L L movies and we're bound to hit it. <laughs> just well, random. No, you probably won't. But <laughs> it's, uh, but that LA story is also a good one. That's excellent. We've got James Hicks Boson saying he likes one and two. Uh, the Beat Freaks likes number two, Joseph Lynch, and Al is Brittany. I'll say number one. Pale Queens calls the red ones the red pill glasses. Uh, let's see. John. Joan Vincent Hassebroek says number one. That's the original black blue ones. Hula for the Grim Reaper, craziest YouTube name ever, says number one. Marie, hey Marie, says three, which I guess is no glasses. No glasses. <laughs> Good times for all, says one. Peter McKenzie says one because he's an original kind of guy. He says Brian Robeson, Captain Marvel. Captain says Captain Marvel. By the way, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is not a movie. Oh, so maybe his username is Brian Robeson, Captain Marvel. And I can't Cap, I mean, Captain Marvel, I'm, I'm a big fan. I've got some Captain Marvel-related books over there on the shelf. But uh, no, not Captain Marvel. No. Captain Marvel was the uh, the kind of the, the red version of Superman. Ah, well, I think his name is Brian Robes and Captain Marvel, which is oh, okay. confusing. Anyway, he votes for the red ones. Um, Bob from Gloombusters votes for neither, which is number three. Dee Marvel is here as well. And so is Paul on the plane. That's because so Bob wants to see you naked. That's what's happening there. Wait, Bob's seen you naked? Well, no, he wants to. That's why he says neither. Oh, it, well, it was the way he said it. It was the way he came off saying that. <laughs> there's plenty of time at the uh, Flat Earth Conference for there to be another Flat Earth faux sex tape. But maybe you and Bob can have a moment. <laughs> faux sex tape? Come on. How much time? <laughs> uh, oh, seriously. You know, you know how Bob probably said it. He was like, I don't want to see him wearing any glasses. Or like, anything at all. Exactly. I want to I want to see him. I want to see those glasses come off as he walks in the room, <laughs> slow motion with flames behind him and rock music. All right. Well, Bill Keith says the black glasses are the Half-Life Counter-Strike glasses. Nice. Good one. That's a great uh, gaming reference. The Half-Life glasses. Like Michael A. G. says Chalky. I don't know what that means. C H A K I. Chalky? Yeah. Is that a movie? Chalky. No. Um not so to be confused with Chaka. The the friends that was with or Land Shaka of the Khan. Lost. Shaka Khan. Let me rock a Shaka Khan. That? Yeah, you see, I was going back even further. I was going right, to the right. 70s and you were going to the 80s. Ghost Protocols in a marriage coming up on nine years. So congratulations. Pretty cool. Okay, so Carl Steinbeck is guessing Weird Science. Another great 80s movie. Oh, Excellent yeah. stuff. Those are all great, great movies. Another, another guess is Real Genius. You, you want to know, by the way, because everything in Hollywood is in twos, name me the other, well, uh, I'll just name it. it, Weird Science, and the other one, the lesser known one, was My Science Project. Oh, I didn't even know that one existed, I don't think. Yeah. Um, hello, Paula, problem? Knowledge Scavenger, and Timaeus. And uh, so we give up. We officially give up. What movie? No, 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 no. We'll wait until next week. Sorry. We'll give, you guys, we'll give you guys a whole week to come up with it. Mike an, an 80s movie that that the person involved wore red glasses, red framed glasses. Sounds like something an LA movie producer would wear. Well, you're gonna have to look this up. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, not gonna, I'm not giving this away. It's too, it's too good. 
All right. I, I, my vote is for the ones you're wearing, the originals, but right. only because the red ones, I like the color. I don't mind at all. They, they seem too small for your face, I guess. All right. All so, right. Vote. But I think both are good. I like variety. Okay. Um, anyway, so red glasses from the Matrix, someone's asking. Somebody wear red glasses? I thought I no thought idea. the Matrix was pretty much <laughs> everything was black. I don't remember. Exactly. Um, okay, so Carl Stenbeck says Joe Dirt is red glasses. <laughs> Joe, Joe Dirt. Dirt. <laughs> With uh, David Spade. Oh my god, a Joe Dirt reference. No. Uh Grover Dublin is asking if this is a children's show. And the answer no, to that it is, is yes. A main... It is. Oh, if this is a children's show. <laughs> yeah, because we're uh, only talking about ridiculous things as opposed to flat earth but you know what this show is not about flat earth proofs if you're looking for flat earth proofs you'll find those amazing videos every single place here no, on is, youtube this is for the flat earth people that want to take a quick break from the the down and dirty flat earth anger and angst and just have and drama and drama and have a little fun <laughs> um Raised by Gypsy says attack of the killer tomatoes because they're red. <laughs> Not an 80 move, 80s movie. I'm pretty sure that was like a 50s Revenge movie. of the Nerds is mentioned. Shane, is that it? I those are black. No, those are black rimmed classes. Okay, okay. Uh, Shane Corning says watch killer clowns from outer space. That could be it. What? No, it's a mainstream movie. I don't even... I never, <laughs> never even heard of that Donald one. Putnam says the man with one red shoe. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad... Not a bad guess, but no. Okay, so Five Arts Liberalis is saying the red ones might be from the movie Tootsie. <laughs> a, dra a drag one? No, no, I think Dust with, du with, Dustin, gender. <laughs> with Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, an early transgester, transgender one. Although, trans if you want to. Transgester. Wait, trans gesture. It trans gesture. Trans gesture. It's a jester costume on a trans person. One of my uh, favorite early transgender shows was starring Hot Tom Hanks. Um, Boys and Buddies? Boys and Buddies. And what about Three's Company? That's not really transgender. Isn't transgender no, when but you, that was you were born the that's wrong an, sex? That's, that's an interesting story anyway, because not to get off on a, on a little tangent. Oh, not to get off on a tangent? Oh, heaven forbid. Uh, okay, sure. we're, no, we'll go off into the weeds here for just a second, because Three's Company, an old, you know, a show from the 70s and early 80s, which was stolen from a British show called Man in the House, was interesting because... Not not for the show itself, but John Ritter himself, John mm -hmm. Ritter's life. Uh, think of this. Think of being in the head of John Ritter. A gay man in real life who had to play straight for his fans, because this is late 70s, early 80s, and you know, 90% of the population is straight. Right. Playing a character, Jack Tripper, that had to pretend to be gay in the show so that he could live with two girls for the landlord who was old-fashioned. Right. Remember that because he Jack Tripper to everyone you know was 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 a uh, was was uh, always like on the lookout for girls, right? But for the landlord, he always had to be gay, and that was his bread and butter role for years and years and years. And he was Tom. a chef as well. That was his character that he played. right. Can you imagine being oh, John Ritter coming mind. home and it's like, I who am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, in my my acting career, I'm pretending to be gay, and in my personal life, I'm pretending to be straight. Wow. Well, I wonder if the people that produced the show knew that he was gay and decided to use that as a, a natural point for him to sure. Why use not acting because it would be a, an easier thing for him. Sure. Although he didn't use the the gay hook in the show that much. I mean, no. yeah, he did it for for um, Mr. I'm sorry, Ralph Furley and Mr. Roper. Mm -hmm. You know, from time to time. But his 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 big talent was physical comedy. I mean, how many times that man fall over that couch? Exactly. Kind of like, um, what's his name? Dick Van Dyke. He was similar to, he was a, a modern day at the time version of Dick, Dick Van Dyke. What about Mrs. Roper? Wow. Her outfits, if anybody remembers. Yeah, it was, it was like, like she took the drapes and just cut them and turned them an into, a, into a muumuu all the time. <laughs> Got to admire. Got to admire yeah. that. Yeah. In some weird anyway. Way. Um, Twitwit says pretty in pink. Were they red glasses? In They're really pink? still going for that. No. In fact, yeah, yeah. Who, wore, wore, who wore glasses in Pretty in Pink? People are very puzzled. They didn't know that uh, John Ritter was gay. And you know what? I don't think I did either. I don't really follow his career. Oh, he came out late. Like, he really? wasn't. Well, again, because of his career. Uh, you, you like a lot of actors. You just can't. Some, some never come out, period. Look at um, Rock Hudson. 
I liked Three's Company. I mean, it, <sighs> catchy little show, and it's it little spinoff. I can't remember what the spinoff was called right off the top of my head. Where he got married and moved in with her. And oh, uh, wow! I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, at the end of the show, they got married. He and his fine, you know, he finally dated someone, met a nice girl, mm -hmm. got married. Big shock to, of course, you know, the landlord. Right. Oh, so, funny. Um, I wasn't really allowed to watch a lot of TV. We would watch the Sunday Disney. Uh, my mother would like let us watch it, and we'd what time? Maybe it was eight o'clock. I don't remember, but Disney Sunday Sunday night. Do you remember that? Way back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. We could go watch uh, that. And other than that, it would have to be a special show. I remember we we got to watch the miniseries Roots on TV. That was, but we weren't allowed to just go to the TV and turn it on. However, it was a period of time when my mother decided to go to school to get a master's degree, and she was gone a lot of the time while we were home. And of course, then we of course rushed to the TV and watched all the trash stuff like Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Three trash. Company. <laughs> oh my trash gosh, trash stuff. Six Million Dollar Man was trash. That okay, was okay. I'm sorry. I, was, I would stand. In fact, I it, it is still. Let's Charlie put it this way: it is Angel. aged very well. I still can't use the beginning. They will block it if you try to use the the beginning the opening theme of Six Million Dollar Man, one of the finest openings of any television show. You know, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. That whole thing. Better, stronger, faster. It's, exactly. Everybody knows it. Yeah. You still cannot use that on YouTube. They will block that really? sucker worldwide all the time. Yeah. I remember when Lindsay Wagner, Wagner, uh, who played the Bionic Woman, was part of the Bionic Man's life, yep. um, and she something happened to her and she lost her memory or something. She couldn't remember oh, loving him. Right. And I remember right, right, right. crying about that. How ridiculous! <laughs> but that's how we are today. People get very involved in TV programming, and and it they believe it. And I think that's what a lot of the drama is in Flat Earth. I think a lot of people love the drama situations. Like, I'll just use myself as an example. People want to believe that I'm, uh, I'll just say, a psychopath because it it's very dramatic and exciting. Or they want to believe that I had plastic surgery on my face because, I don't know, I have lip liner on as a, you know, and it made my lips look bigger that for that show. Or believe that I'm actually transgender because it's the same thing. We for many people who haven't really awakened, but think they're awake, they're in the flat earth movement, but they're not really awake. They are using YouTube as television. And yeah. like I cried about the bionic woman uh, and bionic men not being able to get together because she lost her memory. People are getting involved with believing things about you, myself and other YouTubers that you know, are just crazy cracked out conspiracies and getting emotionally invested in it. So it's kind of weird, really, but that's maybe how humans work. Hmm. I mean, yeah, do you think it's that true. It's true. They, animals they are, do they... that? Do, ca do my cats look at each other and come up no, with conspiracies? No, no, no. <laughs> it's a thing we've gotten into recently. I mean, it, it started... Actually, I'm a little surprised that our civilization hasn't jumped on it earlier. Remember, the early drama shows, real drama, the, the real drum, not soap operas. Soap operas have literally been around since television was invented. Yes. But I remember black and white ones. What was that one that was vampires? Um, oh my gosh, it was in the 60s. I vampires. don't know. Don't, I don't never, with it. I tried to stay away from soap operas. I really did. Yeah. The, but when it got into the, the more real ones, whether it's staged or not, the, you know, try to come off as simulated real, like Cops, for example. Oh, that was one of the I... first ones that you know got your heart up. It's like he's, you know, he's, how many times can we watch a, a cop chase a guy with a shirt, his shirt off around a neighborhood with flashlights? Right. And then MTV really changed the game with the real world series. And yes. that was, then, and then they took it to the extreme. It's like, okay, we know the formula. Just put a bunch of completely polar opposite kids, put them in a way overpriced house, and then give them unlimited alcohol. And that turned into a nightmare. And, now, and then that followed with just about every reality show you can think of now. And some of it's real and some of it's staged because producers want to create conflict. Everyone knows, it's like, look, you've got to have conflict in it. So for whatever reason, because of the conspiratorial nature of our community, conflict and drama comes naturally. Mm. So we don't even have to try. And, and drama just seems to come out from everywhere. Well, when we first started, people were saying, are they going to get together? Are they flirting? Are they really a couple? Are they brother and sister? As David Weiss and Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent all broadcasting from the same house. Exactly. Are we, <laughs> well, are we part of the same operation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that whole thing.
Um, so. By the way, the show Dark Shadows from the 60s to the oh, 70s. And the right. main character's name is Barnabas Collins or Barnabas. Yeah, Barnabas Which Collins. Which they turned into a movie. Yeah, they, they, they revamped it, of course, because they have no original ideas in Hollywood anymore. But I remember that being on occasionally in the background when I was quite young. I don't think I watched it, but it, maybe it wasn't interesting. Shawnee Depp, Eva Green. Really? Oh. And oh, who's the girl? The girl Isn't who Eva was. Eva Green the girl? The girl, the, girl, the, the little blonde. So they the, redid Dark from, Shadows. Was it called Dark Shadows? It was called Dark Shadows. Oh, well, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Wow. Have we talked about anything involving Florida? Not well. We talked meetups. About meetups. meetups. We talked about meetups, meetups. Meetups. Tons and tons and tons of meetups happening. If you guys want to do a meetup, hey, great for it. And I can't wait to see. Hopefully, somebody films some of the footage with Bob and ODD Reality yes. at the Fort Collins meetup, and the media was there. And I guess it went well. So crossing my fingers mm. that that whole thing turns out really cool because it is mainstream it's very very mainstream as a matter of fact hopefully he can uh, we can get this thing out there yeah which is great that's what we're trying to do here um uh let's see uh zern music is here awakened mind says the super friends was a great saturday morning cartoon and land of the lost i love land of the lost um flat earth accord says that they realized it was not in their best interest to have popular music be true art. So they flooded MTV with reality shows while the Billboard music charts degraded. Wow, that's a very interesting theory. Yeah. Huh. And at the same time, the, mu the music industry, let's face it, just you want to see an interesting documentary, and this is sort of conspiracy related. Mm -hmm. It's called Download. How I don't the, even know this one. I'm looking oh, for it's, right it's, it's, it's a great, It's a great little documentary. It, it, from a technical, from a geek, it's a nerd. It's a nerd documentary. It's it's basically the creation of Napster. Oh yes. And how what happened was Napster when they created Napster, it's like okay, let's figure out a way to turn music into little files that can be transferred from co computer to computer. And when they did that, what their ultimate goal was, the guys that created this, their ultimate goal was to go to go to L.A., go to Hollywood, go to the record companies, and say, look, basically they created iTunes before there was iTunes, and they said, look. We've created this great thing. How would you guys like to take it over and give us a cut of it? And all the record companies just laughed them out of the room. They're going, for you guys, you're nothing. Shortly after that, the, there was this famous record meeting, record label meeting, where a guy had a, a PC on his desk. He goes, okay, I want you to know what's happening out there. He goes, give me one of your albums. Name any album from your catalog right now. And he would type it in, and he would find it on various college bulletin boards all mm. over the United States. And he's going, look, we were in real, real trouble here. And the record industry, again, this is aesthetic trivia for you. The, the record industry from 2000 to 2010 literally lost half its money, 50% of its revenue because of Napster. Now, yeah, they sued Napster into the ground. And the uh, you know Metallica was the, was the the front band on that where they where they sued him to the ground. But after Napster folded, you know, because they had to close the whole thing down, they yeah it folded. But you know what remained after all that was done was the MP3. That is how the MP3 got created, and it's it's a fascinating little documentary about how that whole that whole thing happened. Because once they figured you know, and then you have nerds all over the place. Once they knew that MP3 was the format, it's like anybody could build it and. Yeah, why? Why in the world would you ever buy music again? So now they don't even, you know, the record charts they don't even track that stuff anymore. I remember Billboard magazine, a very long, I mean, excuse me, tall, big magazine, uh, somewhat thin, would come to the radio stations I worked for, and that would be something that the the uh, DJs would go through, and the program directors who picked what music what they were going to be playing. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on. If that even, if Billboard magazine doesn't even exist anymore, it's probably only online. Hey, I found the uh, the book. Um, it's called. It's by Phil Hardy called Download: How yeah. Digital Destroyed the Record Business. Yeah, destroyed it. And essentially, the record industry isn't going to tell you that, of course, which is right. why all the ticket prices went up at concerts because the artists had to make money. It's like, okay, how are the artists going to make money at this point? And by the way, don't feel bad for the Napster guy even though you probably don't know, unless you're a super nerd, you're not going to know his name because the Napster guy, after he got sued into the ground, he was one of the early investors of Facebook. Just yep. guessing. Uh, Facebook. Was I right? Yep. Yes. Yep. Between you and I, I always say I'm never right, but we've got to take no. notes because yeah, yeah. So that was, I am right. <laughs> so he ended up making, well, quite a bit of money. Wow. Being one of the early investors of Facebook. Let me see. Does anybody want to see a picture of my brother? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, here's why. 
Why? Um, my brother, who lives in New Orleans, Louisiana, and owns a clothing store, it's a rock and roll t-shirt store. He's four years younger than me. His name is Timothy. And he's on my Facebook. So uh, if you're a Facebook friend, you may have seen us tagging each other and things. But uh, anyway, he's in town tonight. So after we do our show, I'm going out with him and an ex. And we're all going to uh, my Scottish ex. I've mentioned him a few times before. The Scottish ex and my brother are good friends, and the Scottish ex is, knows about Flat Earth because of me telling him about it. Um, anyway, my brother's here in town, and the Scottish ex and my brother are out, and the Scottish ex just sent me a picture of my brother, and there he is. Wait, can you see it, or is it blocked by all these? Oh, uh, I can't see it. Okay, yep, there it is. Him. Timothy Steer, that's my brother. You can see a reflection of a clock in there. So that's my brother. Nice. And... Uh, He's got full sleeve tattoos, so we are similar yet different. But, uh, he was in radio too. He worked part time at a, a radio station, I think, in Mississippi, and in college radio. He went to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo and got a communications degree. Never used it, like many people who have degrees they never used. Um, so he owns a very successful rock and roll clothing store, and a lot of musical artists who come and perform in New Orleans go through his store. And so in his store and on his Facebook and on his uh, Facebook page for his store, lots of pictures with lots of bands like Metallica, et cetera, you know, buying him, shaking their hand and not in a fan way. He goes and hangs out with them later. He knows a lot of famous musicians. So nice. Cool. Yeah. So right on. going out with uh, my brother and X later. So whatever. Cool. Um, What's going on? And you know what? The other day we did the show where we drank and I'm like, I never drink. I'm probably sure we're going to have a drink today. So Hey, there you go. Just one. Because <laughs> I actually, I, in my own home, it's different than being out for me. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, um, speaking of music, Zern Music is here and says the band that the band Bad Religion knew about all of these sorts of conspiracies. So. Sure. Do well, you really and, and think these bands know, like Pink Floyd, there are clues. A lot of people believe that they that these clues are in the ar album artwork and in some of the lyrics, or are we just... No, 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 no. I think so. Well, I mean, the levels of interpretation are probably wide, varied. Mm -hmm. But remember, musicians, like any other artists, are more open-minded. You know, you can, you can plot a graph, literally, the level of creativity with your level of open-mindedness. Uh, singers, actors, painters, sculptors, writers, they all have different levels of open-mindedness. Well, you and I, I mean, I am none of those things. I guess I'm into fashion and art and design. Well, that's just it, though. You appreciate art. Yes, so exactly. you, you know what it is, and you're open to different artistic impressions. And you, as a person that did design of games, that's a design aesthetic as well. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I was into a lot of different stuff. Now, I, yeah, do I create my own stuff? No, but I do like creating things. My my big creative outlet was fireworks. Yeah. So and also you create things on YouTube all the time when you make those thumbnails for people and when you make, uh, you know, a little, um, vid. Oh, yeah. little videos for people. Yeah. I mean, they're not oh, just... No, I'm, I'm open-minded as just about anybody. Uh, in fact, it was the only thing that curbed my creativity was I grew up in a rural island mm. up not necessarily in the middle of nowhere. It was actually in the middle of everywhere, but it was on an island. And so our school was very small. Like we did not have a, a deep theater department or right. a music department or any of that. Had I, you know, who knows what my life would have been like had I been cultivated in those arenas. True, but there's a lot of people who came out of nowhere to use that phrase that's used by everybody in Flat Earth by somebody who doesn't like them. Um, there's a lot of people who live in the middle of nowhere and don't have any creative outlets and then end up becoming a musician or an artist or a painter or a fashion designer or there, a whatever the case there, may be. There are, but that's a little different because that taps into the whole, and you guys have probably heard it in different magazines and stuff, creative angst. Yes, exactly. They're living, uh, feeling like they feel about life and they feel isolated in their small town community and they exactly. feel different and they l they long to go to the big city and, you know, do whatever it is they're going to do. So. And it's, yeah, yeah. The amount of troubled, troubled youth, and I hate to say that, use that term, but it's true. People that have had rough childhoods who travel to Los Angeles or New York to make it big. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Leary, the famous comedian, he had kind of a, an interesting take on it where he was going, yeah. It's kind. Of, he used the the Jackson Five sort of like a um as a as a benchmark. He's going. He goes. How much do you beat your kids? You got to beat them enough to put that creative angst in them, but not enough to where they'll turn on you. 
you know, get that, get that fire in them. It's, well, it's, like I Dennis think Leary can say that and we laugh at it, but it's true. I mean, that's, that's what it really is. You know, the, there's some parents that will deliberately do that. They, they feel the only way that to inspire their children is to be, give them a, give them a tough, tough, you know, the, you'll thank me later, you know, that sort of stuff. I did not have to run into that. Fair. I was, yeah, I, was okay. Makes sense. I was, I was encouraged to do things, but not to the point where, you know, I was threatened to do things. Right. Yeah, son, go out and uh, play with um, explosive devices. It's okay with the fireworks company. That, that was a little different. Yeah, I know. That was really weird. Yeah, honestly, by the time I got in trouble, and now that I look back on it, there was no way it wasn't going to happen. It was always going to turn out that way. I mean, I was literally just throw. they were throwing money at me to do it. It wasn't right. just like, do fireworks. Oh, by the way, here, here's all your neighbors are going to give you money to put on a dangerous fireworks show every year since are we you still 12. a legend in whippy island among the people that knew you since you've been born and raised there as the guy who did fireworks you know back in the 80s well yeah but that legendary thing kind of kind of you know when i got in trouble that's that's right. that was he that went was to my, jail or, well no he you didn't no jail. i didn't go to jail um but that was that was where it pinnacled it was, right. it was like it's like that the the legendary thing doesn't happen until you get to that you know that climax mm -hmm. you know that 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 great act three. Um, we've got Pete James in our live chat saying, please watch the band Arcade Fire's new song, Everything Now. It shows you what the sky would look like in the daytime if there were satellites. You know, my, my favorite band that talked about that stuff, going back to bands really, I mean, yeah, you can, you can talk about, um, well, REM, that's, that's a perfect one that comes to mind. Mm. You know, Michael if Stein. you believe they put a man on the moon, I mean, that yeah. was about as most blatant as it gets. I mean, yeah, the Red Hot Chili Peppers was just a lying, you know, it was, right. it, it was made in a Hollywood basement. It's Californication, right? Or is that the album? Yeah. yeah, I believe so, yes. But REM, that, you know, if you believe, I mean, it was super slow and enunciated. If you believe they put a man on the moon, man on the moon, you know, that, that video, you know, speaks volumes along those regards. And, and it was about Andy Kaufman. Andy Am I right about California Californication? My, Isn't that where it's from? In my mind. Is that it? I'm looking it up now. Think, you know when you say something and then you're like, no, that's not right. Yeah. I do that it's got to be the album cover, the album for Red Hot Chili Peppers or I'm in the Mandela effect. Um, the Mandela effect? <laughs> Mandingo effect? <laughs> that's the street version. Who are you? What? 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 Hey. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So what else is going on in the FE? Are you asking me? Yeah, is there something? I'm looking, at, I'm looking at all the other Hangouts right now. Are there? And any? what's been happening since the last week? Uh, Fiji Mind. There are so many Hangouts going on at no. the same time. There's, there's a Greek Hangout happening right now. That one yes. really threw me yesterday. Yes, there's was, Greek Flat Earth. We know there's Flat Earthers everywhere, but just to see a Greek Hangout. I went in there and said Flat Earth with a heart and figured that will translate. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised after I saw the Russian one. Yes, exactly. Yeah, an all Russian one, but a Greek one? Wow. But that kind of makes sense because remember the, um, oh, crap. What's the, not Croatia, not where our daughter is. The, um, <laughs> By the way, people will be like, they said we have, they have a daughter who's Croatian. What? Well, uh, uh, seriously, that, that thing's never going to die because right. remember, I got a license plate, not from Croatia, but a bumper sticker that's on a Croatian car. Right, and he, it's, he made you know he made a joke. It's like you know, love to talk to your great you know to your daughter one day. Blah blah. For those blah. who don't know, Mark and I don't have a daughter. I don't have a daughter, and he doesn't have any children. I don't have a son. Anyway, uh, there was a YouTuber. Her name was Croatian Girl, and I interviewed her a way back. She is still a flat earther. Uh, she has no channel anymore. She took her channel down for the sole purpose of, I believe she was getting hassled in her life and decided I've made my mark. I've said what I had to say, um, but I don't want to have the videos out. And she asked me if I would remove the video. It's the only video I've ever removed. She's young and, uh, you know, it's just, she I said, was, okay. She was too young. <laughs> well, 16 years old. Too young to older, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> it's like, I can do this. Well, what happened was, is that I interviewed her and in the interview, there was a bunch of uh, connection problems and she was talking about how her father introduced her to conspiracies and how her father found Mark Sargent and how she got into Flat Earth through the Flat Earth Clues. And so she said, 
so, something to that effect. And then the, the interview cut out. And then I said, where were we? Where were we? Okay, you were talking about your father and Mark Sargent. But some person was listening avidly and took a clip from that and made these videos that said that I said, and I slipped by saying, your father, Mark Sargent. <laughs> to her. Yep. And it was somebody called Flat Earth Holland who done several videos on that and put it out and spreads it around and calls me a liar. And that's my daughter. You know, how crazy is that? If she were uh, my daughter, I'd be proud because she's a very remarkable young woman. I am still proud. I miss her. <laughs> I, I do too. I, she, I, before hanging up uh, last time, she said, Death to all who oppose us. <laughs> exactly. And I, 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 tear to my eye. Oh. I want to say times. hello to Mark Ofsky and uh, oh, Awakened Mind says Croatian girl is in her mid twenties and she's beautiful. Yes, I think she's in her. We talk about early twenties, isn't she? At all? She, she, no, she, she's less. No, no. In fact, now she would be. 18? She would be eighteen now. Yeah, eighteen now. That's correct. Um, the way of the world is here. Research flat Earth is here. Um, research flat earth wait you've changed your name haven't you uh mike mazone and um the hori sheet show is here uh bill keith is talking about anthony dickinson no idea uh ridgeview says i love croatian girls so see she's gone but not forgotten i talked to him by the way the the guy from the hori sheet show Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked, and he was—he'll—he'll he'll tell the story probably on his thing. Maybe, maybe should, no, you know, I'll ruin it anyway because people will watch both. Where he ordered a pizza, and he was following the lead, and mm -hmm. he, I think I'm, if I screw it up, don't don't butcher me too badly. Where he made the name Earth is flat. Yes. And it was delivered to his neighbor on accident, and he comes <laughs> outside, and and they're like yelling across the street at each other. He goes, "Well, you know, the pizza guy's going. What's the name on it?" He goes, Earth is flat. <laughs> That's no. so good. No. I went into a, a juice place to get a green juice made. And I it was very loud in there. There was blenders blending and people. And blenders I said, blending. blenders blending, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I told the, uh, the guy at the counter, I ordered my drink. And then he said, what's your name? And I was going to say my Patricia. But then I said, Earth is flat. And then without missing a beat, they have to fill it in on their screen. And then... She said, or he said, I, I think it was, I don't remember, said, uh, it's too long. And I said, well, can you say it anyway? And what happened was they didn't. They just called my name. And when I walked up to the counter to get it, I figured I'm going to try again. <laughs> and I said, the earth is flat, you know, trying to re-remind the guy who was standing with the girl. That's what it was. And th they were talking about, uh, the no, it's hollow, I think was what they had said. Which I found remarkable because they were open to, they knew about hollow earth. So talking to strangers about flat earth, they didn't laugh. They didn't think I was dumb. They didn't call me a moron. So had I been in a place where it wasn't so loud and confusing, it would have been, it would have been an opportunity to, to talk about it. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I should make a quick call, uh, shout out to, I don't know if we, we talked about this, you know, the other Flat Earth billboard in Tulsa that was mm. backed by a woman named Marisa. You can, yes. and Paul, Paul on the plane, uh, yes. did a, did a, you know, Tulsa Flat Earth billboard will run for a month. Meet the woman who made it happen. And her name is Marisa, M-A-R-I-S-A. And she's doing a flat earth billboard for so good for you. That's awesome. It is really good. Yeah. She's taken the ball and run with it, <laughs> meaning that she's taken control of the situation and did and has done something. And I think it's really commendable. Yeah. Yeah. Jibby Jedi is here who says uh, there should also be a research ball earth <laughs> billboard for the idiots who argue for it and don't even know their own model. <laughs> it's kind of true in yeah. a way. Yeah. Uh, Marilyn Wiseby is here. So she's saying hello to both of us. Hello. Um, there is Anthony Dickinson in here, and I thought it was a, a, an old TV show reference when I saw this name coming up, as as in uh, Angie Dickinson. Angie Dickinson, remember yeah. her? She was a sleuth with like beautiful legs, and that right. was her thing, sexy or whatever. Is she still alive? Uh, no. well, if she is, she's got to be in her eighties. Angie Dickinson, police woman. I remember that show. So uh, oh, I gotta look that up. Buddy. Yeah, look that up. I think it's. I think that's what it was. 
Uh, somebody mentioned something about a billboard a moment ago. Hello, to little flatty, and hello to Mucker MC. I already said hello to Ridgeview. Uh, Eighty-five, S still in there. Eighty-five, still kicking. Yep. Um, Tamea says Hollow Earth's been around longer than Flat Earth. Yes, indeed. But they didn't blink an eye at my Flat Earth thing and said, "No, no, it's hollow." I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. Um, Michael A. G. as well. And Frank Bocchiccio, he says, billboards are flat. This is indeed true. Um, this is indeed true. Why all of a sudden am I really hungry? Were we even talking about food? Um, no, we weren't. No, unless it's some sort of lesbian thing because you were talking about Angie Dickinson. That's gross. Hey. I've never been attracted to women. I can see that. I mean, I've never been repelled by women. I don't think, I mean, it's just never been my thing. It doesn't do anything for you. No, it doesn't do anything for me. I know women are attractive, and I totally admire beauty in males and females. And yeah, uh, yeah but I've never, no, it's never been my thing. No, um, Paul on the plane says, by the way, are those earrings flat or round? A couple other people were saying they have their they own. They are flat toroid. and round. Yes. Somebody was saying they have their own toroid field, and Bob and Ginger Sugarbush were talking about good thing I've got cats, because if I had birds, they'd fly through the hoops. So. And what you couldn't call those earrings is spherical Small. remember it's it's not the the world is not it's not ball it's not round versus flat it is three things it is either sphere ball or globe mm. round can it, dinner plate is round your dining room table is round unless it's a square dining room table a uh, hubcap is round so on and so on and so on so you have sphere. so many moments of humor that only when I listen later, because I'm looking at chat, making sure the cats aren't destroying anything, trying to concentrate, making sure we haven't run out of time, that later I I listen back to the show when I occasionally do, and I just start cracking up. And you when you when I said I was hungry, and then you mentioned lesbianism. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's like look, I'm going through stuff, and I'm go, going nope, no food references. You're so good. Sorry. Oh, pizza. Somebody just said pizza. Our friend said pizza. Yes, we, we're yeah, talking about pizza. Now, were we talking about pizza? Yes. Pizza is, oh, pizza is also flat and round. Pizza delivery. We were talking about pizza delivery. Oh, pizza delivery. And then I was talking oh, about smoothies. Yep, like, yep, yep. Hmm, kind of hungry. Was, <laughs> it, we were throwing in some uh, subliminal hot sex reference there at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. huh? um, Chris Topher says, Hollow Earth, <laughs> <laughs> Hollow Earth is a psyop to make you think the Earth is a ball. It was funny. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Flat Earth Vegan Amy says hello. Pretty Patty and Magic Mark. Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. Uh, Globusters Bob is saying somebody to get me a steak. Bob, when I see you, I'll look hey. way up high at you and just smile. <laughs> Bob? He was saying I should eat a steak. It's a joke. Oh, I got it. I got it. That's funny, um, uh, did I mention Bob's thinking steak because he's thinking of me? See what I did there? Oh, oh, mm. yeah, he sees you as a nice piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one. you know, um, uh, we've got Ginger Sugarbush saying that anything could be underground, just like you said that Hollow absolutely. Earth could still exist within Hollow the flat Earth. Earth. Could absolutely thing. exist. You. You've heard this before. Look, our entire civilization, 95% of our population lives from zero to one mile. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it takes. If you had a cavern, again, this is where it gets weird. If you had a cavern even 20 miles high, right, you could fit a, our civilization in there very, very easily, which begs the question, who's to say that our, our entire civilization, this whole thing right here, is not underground. Who's to say that we're not inside some sort of hollow earth scenario? It's very, very possible. Sorry, that's my thing. I know. Oh, by the way, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Or um, as I heard someone say to me once, I think it's called a malapropism. Kill a bird with kill a bird with a stone. Somebody said that around me once. Well, uh, we could kill a bird with a stone. And I thought. What are you even talking about? I've never actually used the singular version of that. I mean, I've heard kill two birds with well, one stone. Yeah, I've there never is no heard such thing as that. It's just somebody saying a saying wrong. I think that's called a malapropism. Rolling stone is worth two in the bush. Yep. There you go. So, <laughs> no, I'm serious. The, uh, uh, I wanted to kill, you know what? I wanted to solve two things at one time because I had mm -hmm. sent you two videos because we were talking to somebody earlier 
and they were bringing up the Sandy Hook thing. You know, we don't often talk about other conspiracies, but they were bringing up the Sandy Hook thing because they aren't convinced that Sandy Hook was a hoax. And so I sent this person two videos. And I also sent them to you. And I don't know if you would ever watched any Sandy Hook hoax videos. I've watched every one that probably ever came oh, out. Oh, you might but think maybe that. not this one. You might think that, but they're two really quick ones that get people. Anyone that doesn't believe it, it's like, oh no, Sandy Hook was totally are those kills. I don't kids even are... know anybody who believes that those kids were real. Kids. That's within Flat Earth. Now, outside of that, everyone. Well, oh, outside Flat of Flat Earth, you never know. But if you want to show actual video to people that really shouldn't make their minds. Uh, uh, change the the two that i recommend one is called you can go on youtube it's called and i and i actually downloaded these and then copied them into skype for well you. we need to talk about sandy hook is a really really good one what good long what a video good video we need to talk about sandy hook oh yeah but you're yeah. talking about something totally I'm, different i'm just talking about two quick videos on youtube that will that will really get you thinking uh the first one you got to watch it in this order one's called people walking through walls at sandy hook firehouse Oh, which is fascinating because it's just a single shot. It was a, it was aired on television and it was it was people. It was green screen. It was all green screen. You could see the layers, the people, none of anything that went, happened during this, this green screen technology was all none of it made sense. There was a guy standing there that didn't look at anyone walking behind him and there's parents crying behind him and he slid to the side for no apparent reason. And there was a guy walking through frame that should have done it in six steps and it took him 20 you know, the, he was basically walking in one place. There was no reason for that to happen. But followed that by the other one, which was actually, I think, done by Russian vids, go figure, called Smiling and Laughing During Live Press Conference. Oh, is it the one with Robbie Parker? Robbie Parker. Yeah, and it's the, it's the really good copy of the CNN clip. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, CNN, it was CNN's fault. It was not Robbie Parker's fault not defending Robbie that much because he still is a crisis actor and a piece of crap. But Robbie didn't know that CNN had already gone live. He, it doesn't fact, matter. He, I mean, if you're a real grieving father, you're not you're you're not even able to get out of your house and do a press conference, let well, alone laugh no, 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 and joke. No, no. I mean, if everybody, if, if other people in there were in on it, it, it didn't really matter. The point was he didn't know it was a live shoot. Right, and right. So, what had happened was he had walked out of the building. It wasn't his house. It was a, It was like one of the school buildings. Right. And he walks out with all the parents. All the other parents are in character, and he's smiling. I mean, he's got a bright smile. He's smiling, kind of laughing and joking, and they say, oh, yeah, you go to the podium now. He gets to the podium, and you can actually see him get into the whole method. Mm -hmm. where he's like, going, okay, right. <laughs> like, yeah. Said, and then he goes, oh, my name's Robbie Parker. It's going, holy <laughs> crap, what the <laughs> hell just happened? Yeah. Yeah. And Wolf Blitzer was the guy that was calm doing the commentary up until that point. No, in fact, women react different to it than men. Women know it's like when they watch it, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your child was blown away the day earlier and your eyes aren't even bloodshot, let alone you're smiling. I mean, you shouldn't be able to crack a smile for a month. I've had cats that I've had to put to sleep, you know, when they when they get older. And yeah. I I owned a clothing store and closed my store for a day when one yeah. of my cats died. I couldn't. Oh yeah, I couldn't do it. I, I, I mean, and you can imagine a six-year-old if you have and, a six-year-old child, horrible, blown away by. I mean, just out of the blue, just yeah. You, oh yeah, the trauma would be unbelievable, and yet he was the exact opposite of that. I mean, there should not have been a smile, especially in a press conference. He wasn't even nervous. That mm -hmm. was the other thing. It's like it's a full-blown press conference, and he's not even showing any signs of anything. I mean, it is yes. pure acting stuff but the point was you show that to anybody and say okay tell me that's the father of one of the dead kids tell me that's the father tell me convincingly that oh yeah i totally believe this there's yeah. a special place in hell oh yeah robbie parker he literally and i know it sound makes me sound suspicious when i say this he almost single-handedly tanked that operation with just that, with I just the, the, that 20 well, seconds. It's like mainstream Dude. believes it. And if you try talking to mainstream people, neighbors, friends, whatever, oh. they'll say, you, you, What are you? You're horrible. You don't care about the fi the families of these poor children. No, no, no. Mainstream. No, no. That clip was never aired again. CNN cut that part out. Oh, they never, we ever see showed. it over and over again. Because yeah, now you can see him up there at the podium going, my name's Charlie Parker, and it's really horrible. But Charlie that, Parker. <laughs> Same well, thing. I'm sorry. Charlie Parker, the musician. But yeah. Why do I keep, yeah, I keep going. No, he Robbie might as Parker. well be because he's not himself. He probably, his name isn't Robbie Parker. It's Ray Charles. <laughs> no, the, the, the name, 
the yeah, Robbie Parker is literally was the one guy out of all the screw ups that happened during that. He was the one guy that almost blew it all. I mean, literally, it, had he done any more, I mean, seriously, if, the only thing that could have been worse him going up to the podium and like cracking a joke with somebody and then forgetting that it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're on, you're live. Knock, knock. <laughs> like, who's there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, or, or if, all he had to do, you know, literally another five seconds, if you want to completely destroy the whole thing, all you do is like, oh, hang on, I got to, I got to get into character. That's, if he would have said yeah. that, oh my God, people, mm -hmm. they would have had to throw the whole thing out. I want to change the topic and go into emails. I got an interview from uh, interview. Wow, that's interview. <laughs> well, because it's called please interview so and so. Fill in the blank person. This person wants me to interview, which I don't know if I will or not. But her mm -hmm. name is Kathy B E U T H I N. Just want to say hello to Kathy. I received her email, and she says uh, in this message about an interview that uh, she just got back from Michigan. Um, she was born in Saginaw, Michigan, and she wishes she could do our My Flat Earth Bowling Meetup, which is going to be in late August in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but she can't maybe another time. Yeah, that's right. another meetup I've got in Grand Rapids going back to Michigan for my sister's um, uh, daughter's, my niece's wedding. So I'll be doing a, a bowling meetup. Um, something else I wanted to talk about. Gosh, there was something. Um, what? Oh, Brad Lazier. I think Lazier is how you pronounce his last name, has written, Hello, Patricia. What are your thoughts about Amazon acquiring Whole Foods? I often talk about shopping at Whole Foods, which is a, a chain of natural food stores. They're very nice, and they have lots of organic things, which I buy, food as well as other products. And, uh, you know, it's pretty shocking because um, Jeff Bezos, he's got that goal of using Blue Origin to build a future lunar colony. And now he's got some control since he's an Amazon guy. He's got some control over Whole Foods, my favorite grocery store. So what do I do? Do I not buy things on Amazon anymore? Do I not shop at Whole Foods anymore because of Bezos? I mean, I don't want to support this guy. How do we live our life? It's a really good question. How do we live our life without supporting the powers that should not be? Um, like, like people like this. Tough to do, it honestly. Is. Everybody's got... I mean, Every, everybody draws Starbucks the line has somewhere. been purchased as well by the same company. And I occasionally, when I'm out, get Starbucks coffees. So don't go to Starbucks. Don't buy anything from Amazon. Don't shop at Whole Foods. I mean, yes, growing your own food, being self-sustaining, uh, Curious Life, who used to be Curious Life of a Flat Earther. Uh, he came out with a really good video about uh, him, you know, growing his own food and his family. And I think it's really great. But And he lives in the suburbs and what he classifies as a normal house. And he's pulling it off. Um, can I mean, I guess I could do that if I wanted to. I don't, I don't think I'm really ready for that, I, although I have a really lovely herb garden going right now. Um, it's really – you have a garden, don't you? My from sister. From time to time? A, my okay, sister has a garden. I know you've got things from the garden sometimes, yeah. and your mom does some canning, and you also do canning with her. I didn't know where those things grew. Yeah. But being self-sustaining is a goal for many of us. Um, it's not something I plan on actually doing. So I guess I'm going to continue supporting a guy who, who's, who, who, who's going to – Go to the moon. How depressing. My money's going to that. Future Agreed. lunar colony. Psst. Okay. Um, what else is going on? So many other things. So many great videos have come out. Um, Saturday the 24th. Something going on in Glasgow. Glasgow Paisley Meetup. Paisley is where Dell of Beyond the Imaginary Curve li lives. I'm sure he'll be there. Um, it's at a place called The Last Post in Glasgow, and uh, Saturday the 24th. That's when that's going on. That yeah. is from Rob, and um, hopefully a bunch of Flat Earthers will go there. Flat Earth female will probably go there because she's in that area, and other other Scottish friends. Uh, that's it, really. I'm going to go back into the live chat. Is there anything that you've got to announce before we... Close our show. Um, no, all just all the meetups that are that are happening, and that's that's really it. I'm I'm really doing more announcements there's for everybody else. So many meetups. Hello to Arwin, and um, oh, there's a big storm coming here. We've got Anthony Dickinson who says a storm is here. It's been fun, everyone. I hope I can stay on, but it's unlikely. Waving four fingers and a thumb to everyone. Four fingers. Oh, wow, yeah, that's what you do when you wave. 
Never heard that expression before. Yeah, there's a tropical storm headed toward Houston, Texas, and other areas surrounding that's not turning into a hurricane. And that is kind of on my mind since I'm going out with my brother and ex-boyfriend after this. So I'm um, hoping that there is no major flooding or anything like that that happens. But uh, anyway. Gotcha. Hurricanes, not good. Where you are in Whidbey Island, I mean, you Never have a, tropi happens. a no tropical storm or hurricane, but you do get heavy rain and wind and your power goes out. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, because in the island, uh, it's, you know, you got a lot of trees and it's rural. So, but that's fine. That's that's minor compared. I'll take that over tornadoes and typhoons and hurricanes. And Earth earthquakes. Earthquakes and locusts and, <laughs> oh, yeah. So just plague. to update the plague, the black plague is the one I always the try. black plague pretty much stay away from that. Uh, we've got Anthony Riley on the show tomorrow, the 22nd, as I mentioned, when we started our show or somewhere in here, somewhere in this mess at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. GMT. And then on Friday, I'm doing a show about the UK Flat Earth Conference that's coming up next year, but they're just starting to get it underway. Right. And uh, that's been in the works for a while. So that's going to be with Gary John, the conference organizer, uh, and um, Karen Pettit as well. So, and that's going to be on Friday, the 23rd. That's you my, got sirens that's again. my ride. <laughs> you know what's weird? We've done a Good bunch night, of shows together, but only recently have there been sirens. What's going on where you live? I don't know. You have hard, nothing hard to, to do say. with it? No, unless you, unless you hear helicopters, I wouldn't worry. All right. Well, uh, one one little visit back into chat just to say hello slash goodbye. Hello to Alex Aquarius as well. Uh, Ginger Sugarbush says, Diva Dante says they have a they have a hug a ginger day in New Zealand instead of a kick a ginger day. I didn't even know they had a kick a ginger day, but I guess that's uh, that a UK thing. Me. I know Americans don't really care, but I, over in Europe, yeah, it's a big deal. My brother's got red hair as well. So we call it red hair here. We never have called it ginger. I mean, that's just not... I showed a picture of him earlier in the show. So if you're just joining us now, I held the picture up to the camera, which probably didn't come off. That Devil's well. red hair, like the fires of hell. But he, my brother went through a phase where he dyed his hair black when we were growing up. <laughs> it looked horrible. You could see the the demarcation line between the, I don't know. There's just I, no way to successfully dye redhead hair black and keep it that way without looking toward, sort of freakish. But he didn't want to be a redhead. But as a female or as a girl growing up, myself and my sister, uh, we we loved being redheads. Loved it. Wouldn't want nice. it any different. So, yeah, maybe I'll post some pictures on my Facebook of my adventures out tonight. Anyway, so if you need to contact me, send me a birthday, an anniversary, or uh, an upcoming meetup, and I'll mention it on our next secret show, do so at Miss Steer. It's M-I-S-S. Steer, S-T-E-E-R-E, -E -E, at gmail.com. You want to contact Mark, you can do it at msargent23 at comcast.net. And uh, like I said, I've got a meetup coming up very soon with delicious vegan food for courses. You have to pay for your own beverages. And it's at La Griglia Italian Restaurant, which is in the River Oaks area, kind of close to where I live in Houston. It's the second annual one. And I have a cap on the number of people who can attend due to the fact that, uh, you know, I'm foot in the bill right. and uh, got a couple of people who've already said yes. All you need to do is message me a first come first serve. Just say, I'm going to be there and be serious about the fact that you're going to be there. Miss steer at gmail.com. Uh, and and, and um, you might not want to miss this because yes, it is yes. going to be filmed. It is going to be filmed for not, an upcoming documentary. Right. And they are coming to film me for the documentary and I've scheduled the meetup during the time they're going to be here. So it won't be about me it'll be about all of us so yeah. do plan on attending and it's going to be cool uh so that's it for the show and right it's been fun it's been great and thanks to all in the live chat and thanks to all who are watching this at a later date please subscribe if you have not already and share the video on your social media and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down either way doesn't matter it all helps the channel it's called engagement that's what they say anyway uh and uh, it's probably the closest that i'll ever be to engaged and same with you mark <laughs> that's when people Never engage can, no, weird things have happened <laughs> very true the only ring i'm wearing are these earrings anyway see you guys later and uh oh yeah keep it flat keep it flat george